Okay, this is take two. Um, please let me know if um, there are any audio issues. I'm still, tr I'm still trying to check this out. I probably should put this on so that I can, so that I can kind of hear myself. Okay, and making sure that the echo is not way too loud. Many apologies for that. Yeah, as you can see, the pop filter got myself a new sound card. I should also share this as well. Uh, no, I should go live first. Okay. So give me a second. I'm gonna go live. Gonna sh gonna share it out. Share it with groups. So that should take me a minute, and then we should be ready to proceed. Yeah. So. Yeah. So many apologies to those who kind of. I kind of saw the weird glitch. Basically, it's just a yeah, straight. Yeah, you can call it a technical issue in the sense that um, I'm still not used to this one. I'm probably just gonna leave this plug plugged on in forever, which may or may not be a bad thing. I think it can, it's gonna continue charging, which might be a bad thing. So I just have to remember to plug plug it in properly before starting the stream proper. One more group, and then here we go. I should also probably set my audio as well, head to headphones as well. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Magic Arena Run. Today, we are going to be doing the... Well, last week, we did the Midnight Hunt. This time, it's going to be Crimson Vow. And we were able to try something different for Crimson Vow, but now we're going to see if we can... Um, we did something different in Midnight Hunt. We were able to do Green White and reasonably well at that. I have less faith for Crimson Vow. It's re it's a really bomby format this time. We pretty much have to find our way into black or red at least, and maybe find our way to have at least an evolving wilds or two. Make sure we can splash for anywhere if possible. It's not quite the same, but we'll see how it works. Also, I'm going to have to. Also, if I do record, I'm also recording this at the same time. I'm wondering what the audio output is going to sound like. I might have to, like I, like I did some adjustments here. I'm still getting used to the sound card and all that. I'm also getting used to this new mic. I actually ended up having to remove this filter here because it, because it actually ate up too much of the sound. This would be perfect if I could um, stick my face right close to this one, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. And it's, it is what it is. Anyway, so just waiting for two more people. Probably should have grabbed the chips while we're waiting. Anyway, that's fine. I can save that. I'll probably save that for the coming weeks. Don't, no need to chow down now. Yeah, it looks like Crimson Vow not as pop. Oh, very, very not popular. Also, we actually lost an, one seat here. Do we end up doing? Do we end up doing after? Wait, not after Matt. Do we end up doing March of the Machine? If this doesn't fill up, I'm, I'll wait for another minute or so. Actually, I'm, I really want to get this one fired. It's not often that I get to fire one of the old, older formats. Okay, got, we're wait, just waiting for one more person, and then we should be ready to proceed. Also, I realize that when you do stream, you're also, you're kind of also revealing your um your full user num number as well. Normally, this would be hidden unless you're using a third party app. But that's actually an interesting case. I'm actually curious. Do we get to see the other seven as well? That might be an interesting, that might be a different change, but no, you only see yourself. So it's only relevant for you, but it does mean something when you do stream. So something to keep in mind. And let's see, we, I guess we're playing black. We're definitely going for talk show. And also note, no removal at all. Like, um, let's see, Wretched Trong's not great. Ramble Worm is kind of fine, but um, if there's a talk show, we're definitely taking talk show. Yeah, no removal at all. There are a few decent black vampires. But we're definitely taking talk show, no, no, no question. This is a blue-black card, so we kind of want to splash, find a way to splash some blue. 
go okay, cemetery protector kind, kind of decent it's actually a very decent trick as well um we might want we could stick in black i'm really concerned about taking this because this is double black double white but on the other hand we could just take this one and just hedge our bets we play either or we don't have to play both so vote is nice this one does give us some removal in Gift of Fangs. This would be the safer pick. I might actually, I might actually end up taking this, but I'm kind of greedy. Let's take these two first and let's see what we end up with. As we can see, we can take the Evolving Wilds. Um, not much in removal this time, so start. there's some regrets already. Foreboding Statue does um, help fix our mana, so we probably could take this. Um, resistance squad is nice if we start going into white green humans. I might just take the foreboding statue because um, being able to generate extra mana is decent, especially if we're gonna. It does open up the possibility of running the double white, double black. Something to keep in mind. Also, not not quite used to hearing my own echo. Oh well, we'll s at least I know that the sound quality should be fine. I'm just gonna double. Ch I'll check it on recording. When I post this up to YouTube, see if the volume's still quite up there. Yeah, some a lot of things change over time. And I do get to upgrade my setup, which is not bad. So I think the next thing that will probably get upgraded would be the computer overall. It's it's actually showing its age more than seven, way over seven years. Definitely cannot run with Windows 11 anymore. Mm. Let's see. If I have to choose between one of these two, it will probably be the Desperate Farmer. I could take the Evolving Wilds again, that would be the safest pick. Yeah, I think this Evolving Wilds is probably the safest pick. Nothing here is that exciting. Green does seem to be quite open, so there is, there is a possibility we could go into green-white humans instead. But we'll take the Evolving Wilds first because it's the most open of the cards. And we'll see what we end up in. At least the nice about Cemetery Protector, it has flash, so we, we it can kind of act like a removal spell in, in, in the best circumstance. Okay, it looks like black is not coming around anytime soon. Doesn't mean we don't have to, can't run this. We can still run this off as flash, but we have to start considering green white humans, not cartographer survey. Bio Loom Egg, um, do we go Blue Black Sacrifice? Not really. We could take the Parish Blade Training. Yeah, I prefer that over the Nurturing Presence. Cruel Witness is also fine, but it's yet another double, double X card. None of the green cards are that great right now, so we'll, we'll, we'll start solidifying the white at least. That seems to be the plan. We might not go Tox Rail this time. So this is a really solid card, so I will try to extend the splash for this. Okay, Vampire Slayer, Dawnheart Price is fine, Drunk Skull Intrigue is fine. Now Vampire, if it were not for the extensive amount of First Strike available to red, I would the Vampire Slayer would be a perfect pick. We could take the Drunk Skull Infantry, it's a... It kind, it kind of works both ways. Yeah, that's probably the better pick in this one. There is a Dawnheart, guys. What's this? Cast an enchantment spell game to light. Mm. We're not necessarily in white blue yet. But it's starting to look like a possibility. There is that, that is a lantern bearer. We can go white blue. Yeah, I'm already starting to have regrets. We're definitely going to go white blue spirits at this rate. Lantern Bearer um, helps get a lot of cards through. Um, also, plus one, plus one flying is not so bad. Uh, and we are getting a lot of Cruel Witnesses around, so that is a thing as well. All in Bok Escort. We're not a plus one, plus one counter deck. That's really green, white. Still Clad Spirit. I think I want to take at least one Cruel Witness before I start taking the Steel Clad Spirit. Also, that one's. Well, it's, it won't wheel to us, but yeah, blue is quite open. And we did get a seal class spirit. Also, uh, witness the future, not, not so into that. Cradle of safety is a good combat trick. 
whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield. So we're going to be on the lookout for a lot of enchantment cards. I think I'll take the Steel Clan Spirit. Also because we're trying to run up to a uh, possible 7 drop. Yeah, so... Oh, there's a there's a fleeting spirit. This one would be this one's very this one's a very annoying card to, for others to deal with. So we're definitely taking that. There's a wonderland spirit. You can only block creatures playing. That's fine. The guider is way too expensive. Yeah, we'll take the wandering spirit, light spirit. Also take the alchemist retrieval. We're passing on the shield there, but that's fine. There's a wretched trunk, no. but there's also. Okay, we're definitely taking the Nurturing Presence here. We, we have a lot of Steel-clad Spirits. Ah, uh, there's a Runo Storm perk, but we only have one card that is a Man of Value 6 or greater. Probably gonna... Uh, there's also a Bleed Dry, but this is another double black card. We probably have to actually pass on this and just take Circle of Confinement instead. This fits us better. I feel bad passing the Bleed Dry, but that is what it is. Kindly Ancestor gives us some... Kindly Ancestor is a good pick. I definitely like it better than the Panic Bystander. Also kind of need a few trees as well. We have a lot of twos actually. So we're definitely blue-white spirits at this point. Splashing for Toxrail. Oh, best, re one of the best removal spell for white, Valorous Stance. We're definitely taking that. So we're playing uh so we're playing aggro mid with a super late with a late game with a late game shot at Toxrail. Also note that so we have two ways of um getting black additional black mana. We probably want to look out for more as well. There's a wash away, it's, it's a decent counter spell, I guess. Grizzly ritual if we want to have even more removal, cradle of safety. Protects us from removal, so that is a thing. I might just take the wash away. No. Mm, I really want to take the grizzly ritual, but this is a sorcery speed, it's way too slow. I think I take the cradle of safety. Give ourselves an additional combat trick, but we also probably need to start filtering through our creatures as well. And find more ways to fix our mana. So functionally speaking, we have only one. So functionally speaking, we have one removal spell, Circle of Confinement. Alchemist Retrieval is a bounce spell, so kind of removal. There's a Skywarp Scob, XL2 to draw a card. Pitix. Ooh, there's an ill-tempered loner, which is Really, really annoying to deal with. I don't need another rare. I try, I'm going to take the other Evolving Wilds. Because we're on the lookout for the possibility of double black. But we probably don't want to rely too much on it. Uh, okay, we can get on that, another removal in Fierce Retribution. There's another Lantern Bearer, which is quite nice as well. I think we take the Fierce Retribution. This time we kind of need some extra removal at least. We don't want we want to have a few pieces at least. Not not too many, but not too few either. Honored heirloom is a way to add to fix our mana as well, but I think I would rather have the statue. There's a fear of that that do I want to just grab another cruel witness? No. I think I take another cruel witness. Okay, Sigardus Imprisonment, so perfect for removal there. Um, quite good. Let's hope we can get some more of that. Now, Sigardus Imprisonment, not the best removal. Um, it, creature's still around. Archbull of Traven or another zombie dice. This does not help us at all. Not get ourselves another Cradle of Safety, but I ideally don't want to run it. Hoping for another big bomb. Also, we did not get Runo Stormcurve back, so that's sad. Lantern of the Lost um, gives us a card draw. Alchemist Retrieval again, or Fear of Death would be nice. I think I'll take another Alchemist Retrieval here. There's another Steel Clad Spirit. We should do a sanity check on how many... 
how many enchantments we have. I definitely prefer that over piercing might. Yeah, we'll take the wonder. We'll take another wonder light spirit. Pro we'll probably start cutting a few of these. Um, we'll probably start cutting a few of these steel clad spirits given the chance. But that's another nurturing presence. And we got ourselves a hollowed haunting, so we now have a real game plan. We're not completely reliant on Toxtra, but I still want to keep that. Also note that we have a uh, lunar rejection, so. But we're definitely taking hollowed haunting here. What are we passing? Lantern bearer. Yeah, nothing. Nothing too. Amazing. Another fleeting spirit. This one is probably one of the most annoying parts for our opponents to deal with, so we're definitely taking this one. We could take another lantern bearer, but that comes around more often. Okay, so we can actually just cut all three um cut all three steel clad spirits now. We do want to we do have a six enchantments, not including Drog Skull Infantry, out uh, Lantern Bearer, Kindly Ancestor. So technically we have nine enchantments available. That's that's quite a few to fuel the hollow haunting. So we still we kinda still want some more. Uh, let's see if we can get a few more disturbed creatures to go with that way. Let's just go with Darren S. Okay, this doesn't help us cast the vampire spell, so we're gonna pass on this. Probably take this spell has flash on the slots to control the spirit. When you cast the spell, tap tap up to two target creatures you don't control, so that is that is a good delay trick. I might also just take another kindly ancestor instead. We no, we kinda want to have room for more creatures. So we'll take that. I suspect we could cut the alchemist some of the alchemist retrieval instead. We, we'll keep one for now, but we're getting plenty of options here. Mischievous cat guys can be really annoying, so if our opponents can't answer this, so we'll actually I actually want to take this. I could also just take lantern bearer, which is the safer pick. Yeah, we'll take the cat guys first. Adamant will, nice, very good instant, so something to consider. Militia Rallier, whenever it attacks the tap target creature, pretty good as a tree drop. It might replace, it might replace some of our Wanderlight spirits maybe, or maybe even Cruel Witness. I'll put this on the side for now. Tech, we're still on the assumption that we're going to run to Oxrail, but we could drop that any moment now. But yeah, we're also going to Oh, this is a very late bleed, right? I might actually just take a syncopate for safety here. We'll, we'll figure out how to fit it. Another kindly ancestor made it. We can actually go white. We can actually go white, um, white blue, more more white than blue, which is a which is a good plan. We can start cutting the cruel witnesses that way. We'll probably cut the parish blade trainee. Definitely putting another lantern bearer though. And another Lantern Bear as well. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain two life. Now's the time to take Dawn Heart, guys. We already have the plan for that. So the question is, do I still keep Hawksrail or not? It's an I honestly want to keep it for the most part. I guess we cut one kindly ancestor. We don't need that many ancestors here. Supernatural rescue did come back as expected. Don't know if I actually want to run it. Though. 17 and 8. We want to cut two creatures. So we're probably gonna... Yeah, it's probably gonna be the Cruel Witness, actually. We'll cut one Cruel Witness. Mm, I'll keep one Chill to the Grave. We don't have Zombies, but um, it's still solid. We can cut one Wonderlight Spirit, just some keep the massive truce and be just super aggro. So at least we have a plan here. I can also do the 41 card special, 2417. So, two evolving wilds. Yeah, two swamps is correct, seven plain six islands. Yeah, that's that seems to be the mix. 
If possible, I would cut one more blue card, maybe the Cradle of Safety goes. So that would be the best so this would be the best fit possible. The cruel witness is a bit awkward, I'll admit. I might prefer say a militia rallier. But whenever you cast a non-feature spell surveil one, we have seven plus several disturbed cards. So that actually gives us quite a lot of surveil, which is a good option, which is something good to have. And it's a single double blue, it shouldn't be too bad. Though honestly, I would rather have any of the other white cards instead. Even Supernatural Rescue might be better here. Yeah, let's, let's do Supernatural Re Rescue first for now. Let's see, let's see how it pans out. So this is going to be very interesting. We originally planned to go black. We didn't really get to go black. There weren't that many cards that, that, that were passing around. Except for that super late lead, right? That one did not make any sense at all. What gives, man? Hey, Jericho and Lanon, good evening. Yeah. I was considering going to Conquest to meet Jimmy Wong, but the crowd was something else. Yeah, actually, someone I know um, was going to go to Conquest as well. Okay, first we have to mulligan this. Um, actually went to Conquest, um, was able to meet meet several people. It was it was quite re it was quite interesting. That's what that's what she said. Yeah. Also, the weather was a bit it was a bit concerning. So that that is another thing. But yeah, um, nice to see. Every okay, so definitely cracking this for blue. Maybe we're doing it too early. Opponent might end up actually playing something, but we'll go blue first. Into we'll go fleeting spirit first because this is the aggro card. Next turn we could probably dawnheart guys and just get oh opponent's not doing anything for two turns. Okay. I'm going. I'm willing to do the kindly ancestor because we can just unload the rest of our hand next turn. Though maybe should be careful with unloading. Oh, opponent's stuck. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a disaster for her opponent. Oh, let's see what this card vampires is. I think the whole thing was a disaster to begin with, so never mind that. When it hits their turret green mana, it's an apprentice sharpshooter. We can still confine that, so not too bad. Okay, there's a mischievous cat, guys. Yeah, that's now that's a solid one. Now it's not perfectly safe for us. At least we know there's no bleed dry anywhere in the future. Nature's embrace. Add two mana of any color. So what do they have? Oh, I feel so bad for our opponent here. Vampire's kiss to stay a lot alive. Okay, sure. But yeah, that's super feel bad. We even hit. Opponent not quite dead yet. We could have ended with Supernatural, but let's hope we don't regret it. Opponent goes Restless Bloodseeker. Probably has another drop to start blocking, but they need more help than that. There's not. By Gripsaw. Yeah, that. That's a good game. Yeah, and... yeah, sorry to rub it in, but but yeah, I think our opponent had 
Yeah, this was really subpar. This one our opponent discarded, but honestly speaking, Vampire's Kiss is... It makes sense for black-red. It makes zero sense for green-black. No, kind, not exactly easy to judge there. Yeah, I heard actually that um that at least I want to, I'm curious how how was the crowd over there? Because um from what I heard that um there there were really a lot of people depending on who you wanted to see. Anyway, so turn two fleeting spirit, turn three ancestor, or any of these other cards. So, and we get to get, start our black splash, so we're fine. Oh, we get to even double black splash. But we'll save that for later. Oh wait, why are we running three swamps? We only need the two. Uh oh, I have I'm gonna I'm gonna rebalance that. That is not right. So next turn I can go evolving wilds, drop the nurturing presence. Depending on what let's see what our opponent drops. We drop the ho we have the hollowed haunting. This one needs to get white. Doing the same thing. So it's really more of a defensive card. Yeah, we need our. So, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be attacking. I keep forgetting that the Sleeping Spirit functions kind of differently. But it does give us a it does give us a discard. Let's see, maybe our opponent drops a bleed dry. I wouldn't mind that. But definitely hope our opponent does not um we actually want our opponent to play something here. We we really want to cast slam this hollow haunting. So this is going to be a bit of a test of patience here. We might. Hey, Daniel the Bingo Carino, thank you for liking the stream. Oh yeah, Jer Jericho Aladdin, also thank you for liking the stream as well. Opponent is in the tank right now. So right now we are doing Crimson Bow Draft. Opponent goes for a Stitch Assistant. Will they exploit? They probably could have been done, done the draw discard first, but I guess they did not. And yeah, thank you for sharing the stream, Jericho. That that was re that that was really kind of you. Anyway, not passing Valorous stance here. We got the white black after we got the double we got the double black after all. Now I might even let the sleeping spirit actually wait, we have three cards. Well we don't have the one white mana though, so yeah, so that's a bit out of the option. 
my ideal plan is to cast Ancestors and Grace and start swinging. So we will need one more card than we are. Opponent safe, swinging, swinging at us. Okay, we'll take the hit. Opponent has a uh, self up and tumor. Okay, fine. So I can cast. So I can actually cast another one. Now we only have two cards, so no first strike. But we are hitting, hitting quite big. So that's pretty decent. Not bad. Oh yeah, I forgot to. Oh wait, no, that is the last one. So would have preferred to keep one more for Valor stance. Screaming Swarm, yeah, we're we're definitely sniping that. So how many we need seven or more enchantments on the board right now we have one, two, three, so not not quite that many. Another nurturing presence. Let's not put all our eggs in one basket. Now here we can use the Valor stance in the reverse way. Yeah, opponent's gonna go for that. Wait, yeah, target creature gains indestructible. Let's make sure we're doing the right one. We're kind of saying that um, it, we're kind of saying that we're okay with them milling us. Yeah, that. Yeah, the assistant is gonna go for go a long way. This is gonna be very good. Also, I'm still wondering if I should adjust the echo. I'm gonna lower it a little bit. I hope it, I hope I'm still quite audible here. Opponent is hitting their seven mana. I hope they don't have their own talks drill. It would be kind of awkward here. Nope, one of concedes. So we kind of got up, we, we got out of that one safely. Ah, it, depending on the rares our opponent could have, we were not out of the woods. But we got our second win. That was pretty good. So two down. Let's see how many more we can get. Also, now that I think of it, I don't think I played Spirits either in, when Crimson Draft was up. I was pretty much playing Vampires or something. Vampires, Werewolves, Zombies. I don't think I really played Spirits at all. And even this one, I was kind of going to go into Humans, but yeah, the Spirits were open, so we took the Spirit deck. And got rewarded with a nice Hallowed Haunting. Let's see, if we, let's see how everyone else is up. I'm wondering if I can adjust this so that I so that the pop filter is not that visible. Uh, yeah, okay, so the okay, so yeah, pop filter not visible if I do it this way. Does it look kinda odd that sometimes I will be talking like this? I probably have to look at this camera, the camera here this way. I'll figure out figure things out. Maybe adjust the chair. Yeah, all, all these sorts of things. Wait for another opponent. Oh my gosh. That is another problem. If there are not enough, okay, we finally got an opponent. Okay. Yeah, because so let's see what we get. Turn to 
you actually have the toss rule in hand, do we really need it? Probably not, but this hand is still kind of keepable, um, except for, oh yeah, I forgot I'm supposed to cut one swamp. We got ourselves the Fierce Retribution as an option. I might end up actually pitching this, though. And this one's just one damage to each opponent. That's, it actually does kind of play into the vampires here somewhat. No, it plays into the Midnight Hunt vampires. The Crimson Valve vampires are really blood tokens galore. Opponent might have a removal spell. I am, yeah, I am willing to just pitch the cat dice in this scenario. Also helps that most of our, yeah, maybe I should have removed this one. We don't really want need the talk through of this early. Also note that this is uncast, so we will still take one damage if our, even if our opponent tries to point something at this. When it goes ragged recluse. This will transform. They, they they'll probably practice blood token. So if, if it does transform, yeah, it just gives them a very odious tree one. So I think next turn we actually just hold on to get ready to fear for fierce retribution. I, I can still cast Lantern Bearer now though. I can cast Lantern Bearer. Opponent is thinking quite hard here. Let's see. They did pitch one land, so I'm assuming they definitely have another land at this point. Vampire's Kiss. Yeah, sure. Now this is the deck where the Vampire's Kiss this fits better. When it's not attacking, so very okay. So this is a problem. Yeah, I think our opponent is more willing to attack now that we've shown that we're missing a land drop. But yeah, I am going to adjust. I'm going to take out that third, that third swamp and replace it with um, another planes. Though we haven't drawn any yet, so it probably doesn't matter in this case. It will matter soon enough. Any other land, at least we can cast Mischievous Cat Guys and still hold up Fierce Retribution. But I think our opponent here is aware of Fierce Retribution, so not gonna catch them unawares with this one. Yeah, if I exile, it's probably gonna exile their swamp. When it goes restless, Bloodseeker into a ceremonial knight. Okay. When it did not gain life, so yeah, they're missing the other half of the combo here. So far, not worried. Too worried about that. Oh, but they're gonna transform it right away. So. Still a tree tree. Not, mm, not. Yeah, still missing mana. This is a problem. I could play the kindly ancestor, but that just makes them attack. The fact that they're not really doing anything means I'm actually quite fine with this. Still also missing missing the mana to move this one, but we really need to find a way to remove this soon. Yeah, we got really punished for this one. Opponent 
Force Mark call for introduction. What's this? We'll probably discard the cat guys. Respect, but we will. The question now is which one do we respect more? Opponent's still missing mana here, so I probably actually take out the odious witch. Yeah. Taking a big hit though. Yeah, if we don't solve our mana issues anytime soon, that's gonna be a problem. Solving that anytime soon, but at least we can stall the ground out a little bit more. Next discard's probably gonna be Fox Rail. We're way too far too far to get to it to Fox Rail. I might actually consider playing Cat Guys on the Lantern Bearer. Just to start finding a way out. And it goes, ah, they have, yeah, they have their bomb Marin and Vika. If they go for sacrifice, I sacrifice. Okay, draw one card, lose one knife. That's fine. We hit our, we hit our land. And it's not white. Swing with the kindly ancestor because we need to start gaining some life back. This doesn't have death touch yet, so it's not. Yeah, so opponent's probably gonna let us hit. You really need another white. Black would be fine, it lets us cast cat guys. It lets us cast some dawn heart guys into cat guys. Any, any man is kind of fine actually. Opponent could crack blood bomb from the But um, they're all Ballista Watcher deals one damage to any target, so okay, not good. If our opponent goes for each player sacrifices a creature, I might sacrifice Lantern Bear. There's a good chance our opponent just goes all the way and transforms instead. Though I can see them sacrifice sacrifice the flame flame breeder, we sacrifice lantern bearer. That's a that's a decent enough sequence. Okay, your opponent goes for the transform right away. Yeah, flying death touch life link is an issue. So opponent gonna get themselves another blood token. Oh no, they're not swinging. Okay. So tempted to just play the hollow taunting right now. Yeah, and I, I think I will. Opponent will have to wait one turn, but I might actually just you, yeah, I might actually just pitch the fox roll at this point. So we can still save sleeping spirit somewhat. Opponent pitches another land, so yeah, we're still. Okay. 
This is actually one of the longer games here, and yeah, I'm kind of surprised it's taking this long. Well, not really. Our opponent is actually being very judicious. There are actually several times our opponent did not attack. I guess they just didn't want to trade with Fleet and Spirit after all. Opponent can activate this. Each control creature controls flying. None of the above. So it only affects Enrica. Surprised our opponent hasn't tried gu um, gunning for this one quite. I'm um, gunning for Ballista Watcher quite yet. Mm, they're gonna attack with exactly two. That gives them two mana. Just an interesting issue. But that will celebrate. Okay. Why not really just unloading? Six mana here, so I kind of want to play the Dawnheart guys to start the. Like I could go all in. The... Yeah, let's go all in actually. Nurturing presence, so that will be interesting here. So let's see, it takes us yeah, giving everything flying vigilance, but it'll take a while. It'll be annoying if our opponent has, uh, say, a bleed drive, but at least we would still have our to still have our token creatures on the ground for much for that much. Also, surprised our opponent still hasn't popped uh, uh, tried popping the token with Ballista Watcher. Oh, they're considering it now. They're considering it now. This has first strike as long as it's attacking. Going for the big pump. One is finding a way to shrink our board. I know this can go down to 4 4, so we have to keep that in mind. Most likely, I would end up jumping, blocking something with, with Leaping Spirit. Using one of their timeouts here, really planning. It's actually a really deep plan here. It's also very unlikely they're going to crack this fight yet. They're only going to get one creature card out of it. It's so not worth it. I'm also actually. Sorry. They probably pop the token. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna swing first. Let's see how many. They probably swing with exactly two to flip a luring suitor. That gives them lots of mana for this. Oh no, they're actually passing. Ah, they're gonna go for this one. Now all of a sudden I don't want to. Now all of a sudden I don't want to discard the um, talk shield anymore. So we played the Dawn Heart twice first. So I could swing with. I could actually just swing with both. Oh, I could swing with all of these guys. Opponent could say snipe one creature to try to reduce it, but I can bring it back up with Cemetery Protector. So there's our alternate plan there. Our actual plan is really um, finally take care of Enrica. We, we will lose a lot of enchantments in the process, but 
it, it's kind of fine at this point. Thing is I am actually willing to trade one token for that. So now we see if our opponent goes for the blood fountain. If they go for Enrica, that's gonna be annoying. The Ballista Watcher is not too bad though. This is not it's not limited to sorcery speed, so that is an issue. So next turn is probably just casting Kindly Ancestor or nur Nurturing Presence. So really thinking this one out truly. And I know we're near the one hour mark and this is just the third match. I was hoping it would go faster, but man, this is really exciting. Uh, nail biting in a sense. That said, I will pitch Hawksrill if they target go gun for fleeting spirits. So maybe not, I could just let it die at this point. I'm just waiting for our opponent to crack that blood fountain. Nope. Gunning for giving the first, so... Opponent might attack with just these two that will give him two mana. I would probably just some block spirit into a luring suitor at that rate. Also note that Also have to be careful that it's just two tap two creatures to get the first, so that's another issue. That said, I could see a plan where we could gun something else down. Oh no, they just skip. Okay, we're fine. We're we're playing talks real after all. So that means we want to save one card in hand. I still want to save the Cemetery Protector because I know our opponent is going to go for this. I could swing with this one just to ship, ship at our opponent's board. This will trade with one creature. It might just trade with the Blood Petal Celebrant which is kind of poor. I could swing with the Fleeting Spirit just to get it over with. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Yeah, I forgot about that. It's a good thing I didn't. I could have swung with this one though. Yeah, we'll let it die. We actually forgot about this. But that might actually be a fatal mistake, so let's hope it's not too bad. Does our opponent have no enchantments there? We might want to take one of our own enchantments instead. Yeah, we can take our own nurturing presence. Crack that blood fountain. Crack 
it. Crack it. Come on. Come on. Yes, I know you want it. It's not like you have anything better to do with your mana anyway. enough that we did manage to hit Foxville. I'm actually tempted to also play the Lantern Bearer as well because I'm... If so let's do a double check. This one is creatures you don't control. So that will... Yeah, now start wiping the board really good actually. Yeah, we start we start loading up the board. Now the humans don't buff the spirits, but that, that spirit will buff the spirit. And we'll just wait. The board will start shrinking eventually. Now opponent's gonna need a bleed dry to answer Toxwell, so but we would have at least taken out the blood petal celebrant by then. So we're kinda hoping for that. Oh, and we also get the one slug. We also get a slug as well. This is gonna be so interesting. Also, by uh, by flipping it back today, our opponent can't activate this quite yet. swing with this, but I kind of want to be judicious about it as well. Also, yeah, we can crack it. We can crack the slug. We'll get more later. <laughs> this synergy is kind of strong. It's not perfect. And yeah, opponent concedes it at that point. Yeah, talk. I would have conceded to the moment Toxrail landed. Toxrail is just busty. Opponent playing defensive for a black and red deck. Yeah, way too defensive if you ask me. It feels like an episode of the hero is overly cautious. But in this case, it, it's not the right kind of cautiousness. I will say that um, the, del the early game delay was felt kind of smart because it um I, I was stuck holding on to fierce retribution for quite a while the late game delay that was probably not that smart now yeah you're right i was expecting our opponent to swing even more but yeah kind of sealed the deal there okay so yeah this one's a Bit concerning. I might not even play the evolving wilds right away because I don't know if I need double white or double. Because I don't know if I need double white or double black. So I can wait actually. Does our opponent have a counter spell? Syncopate would be actually be a good one. Yeah, that's that's fine. Cut it out of the way. Ooh. Which does make sense. Blue tends to be underdrafted here. Okay, so now that we got the double white, we now know that this can go for black. So, 
I'm going to offer the trade. Yeah, one is not going to trade. I still haven't cut the trade swamp yet. The, the moment I lose, I will cut that trade swamp. Oh, one is actually playing blue black. So this is not that interesting. Now, I could just chump block this. Now, it's possible our opponent has a removal or a bounce spell. I know Grizzly Salvage is 6 mana at sorcery speed, so they're not quite there yet. Lee Dry is double black. Blue bounce spells would be annoying though. So I might actually just swing with this and... Oh, specimen. Okay, they gave up their black, which means they pop. And they cast their blue. Okay. Now here's the thing, if our opponent cannot just switch, they could swing with Gutter Skulker if their plan is to trade with Fleeting Spirit. Also remember, just one card in the yard, you kind of need more. One in place, Whispering Wizard, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, nice. Yeah, opponent might as well play that. I kinda still wanna play this. This is an interesting race, but I think we might So now we're just kind of waiting on talks real, but more likely we're just gonna play Supernatural Rescue and to clear, to clear the board. And let's see. Opponent might now just stack this, but that just makes something up. Just another Gunter Stalker, sure. Persistent Specimen, sure. Now I'll admit our opponent is actually kind of weird in going aggro considering, well, they might eventually have an answer to the Ancestor. They now have the double black so it opens a lot of um, window doors for them. Another shortcut, make some spirits flying, sure. Surveil. They're just going to start hitting for three, which is fine. Now I can, I can clear the way right now. I could also wait for them to block, then just pump, which would also be kind of which is also nasty.
Yeah, I should also start activating this. We need, we need this to feature now. But that clears all the flyers. So, but it's we're still we're still in trouble if our opponent has a burn spell, uh, a removal spell though. And blue black, I will be surprised if our opponent doesn't have any. Going for the head. Yeah, sure. So our opponent now has a way to block, but we do have a way to chump. Ooh, when it actually took it. So I think it kind of makes sense. Um, when it might have something to pump that one. Steel fat, uh, steel fat spirit, that's not it. Also, how many cards in the yard? Two, not enough for first try. So guard is imprisonment is enough. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a very ni nice late. That was a very good um, late pop deck. So I feel like I was probably gonna punch through anyway, unless our opponent drew into more into more of those spells. But yeah, now that was really solid. Now I need to remember to remove that extra swamp. We don't need that extra swamp now. Yeah. Though it hasn't hurt us quite yet, but. In reality, we probably want to. Yeah, we probably want to run, run more planes at this point. We have because we have one double black, but we do have two double whites, so that is something to keep in mind there. And we already cast Hawks Roll once. We can already um, we we can say mission accomplished. Yeah, that was a very good game. Yeah, good game indeed. So let's hope that adjustment does not wreck us. This one. No action unless we hit the third land. It's kind of scary. I'm going to mulligan this. I think that's a mistake. I have to mulligan one more time. Okay, we keep this. So. Uh, I don't want to drop this, but I kind of have to. Yeah, that mulligan was a mistake. But we were due for a loss anyway, so it's okay. It's kind of fine. If I knew I was going to draw another land, I would have probably been two. I would have been two lands. Training, not, not an issue quite yet. We do have foreboding statues, so we just need one swamp and a lot of time. Which might be an issue. Opponent is playing green white. Yeah, we'll take the one. See how deep your opponent is. Okay, Dox one and Country Slap that. If our opponent has a combat trick, so be it. Okay, opponent does not have a combat trick. We'll play the Dox one and Country. Because we don't need the extra, extra mana fight yet. Also, our opponent missing a tree drop. They probably won't miss the four drop. Ooh, see, why do we have it? So you put one more. This will get trampled in life mix, so this is a nasty combo. We we will be forced to double block. Or maybe not. I'm taking a risk here. I want to see which one our opponent goes for blocking order. Like, okay, they had an answer for both. That was annoying. But yeah, we, we did mull down to two, so that, that's gonna hurt us a bit here. Yeah, 
this is a lost game. Um, we'll see what else our opponent has, but yeah, that that piercing life was a bit is kind of annoying. Yep, yeah, because it's, you know, we, we we lost everything. Well, we did mulligan down to five. I, could we have kept that first hand, the the one that was we just needed one more land? We probably could have kept that. We did we did not necessarily. Um, the mull was out of uncertainty, but we could have kept that hand, and even then, I, I wasn't so sure. We would only have one removal spell for that option. Sometimes that's, well, that's sometimes how magic goes. We can't complain too much. It is what it is, and we got four wins anyway, so it's not too it's not too shabby. Okay, this one we can definitely keep. We have we have two we have two um, early game plays. In fact, it's... And we can kind of bite our... When it probably has removal, but we can kind of bite our time a bit. If our opponent drops a really nasty tree drop, we... one land away from dropping hollow haunting but um if not we can just go for boating statue and just go for that Ooh, when it now forced to just play a pack song club now opponent might might have burn but i'm i let's get it out of the way if, he, if it does massive might okay we lose the dawn heart dice which is mid at least we got it out of the way. Yeah, definitely drop the hollow pumpkin first. Let's Next turn, we definitely want to do nurturing presence plus something else. I'm gonna play spore crawler. Oh, this was taunt. This was um supposed to be one of the good cards. I'll take the hit. So we do have fierce retribution as an option now. So there's something to keep in mind that I. Still want to yeah I want, still want to do nurturing presence we'll get we'll get this creature spell anyway no matter what happens to this one now I might not even go for the fierce retribution here I might actually just play the wanderlight spirit because that will still grow with the spirit cleric yeah, so I could have sequenced that better. At least we flipped it to date. Ooh, opponent, let's see what our opponent digs with their evolving wilds. Usually it will be a splash color. If it's a splash color, it would be black. Oh no, they're just playing green red. Okay, so we hit the Fox Rail. We are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We are 2 mana away from hitting Fox Rail. So. We'll just play it safe and swing with these. When it goes Averbrook Caretaker, we can't do anything about that. And this one, what does this do? It puts on each creature you control. So we do have a plan though. Can't see guard this imprisonment anything here. Yeah, the timing is off. We can make this into a 5 5, but our opponent is going to have such a big board at this rate. Mm. 
we need to be able to cast two spells back to back, but we ha don't have targets for it to do that as well. Uh, I guess we try to race. Like if our opponent swings with all this, this is like what, 8, 19, 11, 12, 17, so we're still at 4, we're not, not too bad. So we definitely want to flip this into a 5-5, five, five. we want to convince our opponent to attack. How we know this will get a bunch of tokens too. Now I'm going to throw, Ooh, wow, this is going to be a pro heavy problem. We needed another fire. Yeah, we have to block one card. Well, we're not casting talks real this game. And since they have vigilance anyway, it doesn't matter which one we block. Aberbrook Caretaker is really annoying in that sense. If there are three or okay, so we do hit the land, so we get that one. We get that one. So three, four, five. Transforming it will not put in play, but we, so we need to have enough blockers. Technically, I could just swing with the two of these, and that would be. I need to have enough lockers, so I'll beat these two. So now we're hoping our opponent does not have removal. So far, it doesn't look like that. They have a way to give trample, it doesn't matter at this point. If they have a way to remove one of our flyers, it's really bad. Oh, come on! That's so annoying. so mean. Actually, this does highlight the nature of two lands or sus hands. Yeah, it is what it is. Well, this does highlight the nature of um, Crimson Vow. And, well, let's, let's be fair. We did wreck one player with Toxreal, so it's only fair that we get wrecked likewise with um, Aberbrook Caretaker. Ay, ay, ay. Now, that, now that, is what, now that, that is definitely a beating. Can't, can't really do anything about that. So four wins, two losses. We already made the adjustment, so I can't really think of anything else at this point. Um, yeah, we really don't have an answer to to care, caretaker. So sh short of a board wipe, nothing we could really do about that. Mm, talk to him again, but we probably can keep this. We'll just have to go evolving wilds into white. It might be slightly annoying if we hit the white mana afterwards, but we will accept it. Called it. I think the Dawnheart guys first, just to give ourselves some allowance at least. We're not in a rush quite yet. Prison this one just to keep the aggro going. If I want to trade, I kind of want to trade it for something larger. Also, we will be able to do nurturing presence drop skull, so that would make it a uh, four. There's a supernatural rescue we can do as well. Hard 
disciple into a resistance squad, so they will draw a card here. But I definitely. Oh, wait. And we take out the block? Yeah. Okay, hollow hunting thing. I definitely want to swing with the I definitely want to swing with this because I want to encourage trades. Now if our opponent has another Abra caretaker, I'm gonna be so annoyed. A fight spell and karma group. Still annoying. I am willing to trade them. probably has some have something big. If it's the hunter is really annoying, but at least that would only be like six. We were actually so close in that last game, but um can't be helped. Wolf strike. Okay. We'll take the five. No, opponent's gonna stay back. Does he have another wolf strike? Oh, that's so annoying. On the flip side, we, we did still get our token here. And we can still swing. Yeah, this one's gonna be yeah, this one's gonna definitely be annoying. We could lose this one. Yeah. Double wolf strike. Don't see that every day. So flooded now, it's not funny. Oh, yeah, we should also remember to exile this. No, we don't have to exile it, but we're probably not going to hit the seven. Third wolf strike. We're not gonna win this if our opponent has that much removal. We might have to take the damage though. It's so what we're hoping for. We're that's not what we're hoping for. It does give us something to crack into, so that's not too bad. Maybe ancestor something we can play forward, but yikes, we probably will be taking a beat. And a flourishing hunter. That one is I was expecting that sooner, but that's okay. It's a shame that we lost three in a row on this on this one, but but um wow. Well, our opponent had three um had um, plenty of removal, so that they kind of deserved that one. 
Well, that's a shame. We, but we did get four wins straight, so I can say that um, that, that was quite good. And let's see, first first loss we can blame to sh to having to multi five, so that one was kind of suspect. Second, we lost to Avarbrock Caretaker, which is why people really hated this format. Third one, oh, it's just multiple wolf strikes. That one, that one was a solid game for our opponent. So we didn't get the full win, but four wins is still not bad. I will, I will take it. We, um, it's not the greatest run, but it's still a de it's still a decent number. And that will be it. And there we go. That's going to be it for this episode of Magic Arena Run. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Turn on notifications and whatnot. Many thanks to all those who tuned in. Daniel Davilio, Carino, Jericho, Elagan. We actually wonder um, how, how long Conquest is. But yeah, the lines were very long. Some, that's just the nature of events. Also, I would really be scared to go to an event like that. Um, hey, Toxrail, still alive after all these years. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys again next time. Take care. God bless. Stay safe wherever you are. Have a great week, everyone. Take care.